Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food, with a mostly carnivore lifestyle. Um, but that doesn't matter because it's just what works for me. It's what works for you that I'm always curious about and, and supportive of as we go down our journey of what's going to work for us. You may hear some noise behind me because two cats have something like a mouse stuck behind my shoe boxes. So they've got some entertainment. <laughs> it's like putting the kids in front of Sesame Street, right? 30, 40 years ago. That's how we did it. Well, I was just thinking, um, and, and I'm always kind of thinking, that's why I love my two jobs, because I'm like thinking while I'm being paid about my personal goals and achievements and, and uh, you know, what I like to do. I don't know if you have the luxury of that. Maybe it's to and from work. Maybe it's after everybody goes to bed. Maybe you're like me. You're up before the roosters and thoughts just kind of come in, filter in and out and decisions get made. And you know the difference between a decision and a choice, right? We've had this discussion, haven't we? If not, it will be always revisited because I think it really made a difference in my timeline of thinking and, and uh, where I was, where I am, where I'd like to be. So that being said, have I confused you enough? Yeah, this is a channel about getting better in the head along with our body and our and uh, choices with, that were um, presented every day, even after the, 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 <laughs> the decision has been made, how we handle it. Now, one of the things I was just thinking, I got a new stove yesterday. It's really nice. Thank you, Greg. And um, so I'm adjusting to it and it, it's just kind of fun. So as I was standing over it, I was, I was thinking about um, what's the best time to make a big change in your life? Do you find that some of your bigger changes just happened? Do you feel like you fell into keto after being on something very, very, very long term? unsuccessfully, like, I don't know, Weight Watchers, <laughs> something like that. Did you get tired of spending the 30 or $40 each month before you started buying their dumb products? Did you get tired of buying the foods presented, offered by, you know, Nutrisystems and Jenny Craig and all of those too? Are you uh, looking for a way to make your own food progress, food journey, lifestyle, way of eating, a little bit better. How did you come upon your decision? Was it like the disgusting number on the scale? The finally, that's it. I've had enough. I'm going to make a change. Were you lucky to just kind of fall into keto? Maybe leading to carnivish, maybe leading, leading to carnivore. Were you able to do all those things? I'm, I'm always absolutely amazed at people that were vegans or vegetarians and slowly began to have meat in their diet or animal products. It's just amazing how that happened and um, how they felt once they did that. Just absolutely amazing. So I know that for me, it was reading Wheat Belly that made me come to my um, big decision to give up first grains for a whole month and then, no wait, first sugar. Um, for the month of August, and then I gave up grains, or maybe it was the other right way around, but it was like five years ago. And I read Wheat Belly, must have been Wheat first, and I read Wheat Belly, belly and it's like, yeah, yeah, I think, I think I qualify. It's time. All the things that he said made perfect sense. So I read that in the month of August, gave up the grains. That's right. And then I started buying all the gluten free CRAP the cereals and the pastas is like, you know, look for sauces that were gluten-free and, you know, all that kind of dumb stuff. And of course I overspent because I'm, you know, a hoarder of sorts with food. Um, now my, my freezer is my testament to my hoarding because there are all the wonderful U.S. wellness meats and all the organic burger and the bacon and the butter and all those sort of things that I can freeze and pull out when I need them. Or like when I make Greg a batch of chicken thighs or chicken wings, 
I, you know, can cook the whole thing and, and freeze half for another time when I just want to like take out and, you know, it's on my, my fifth night of beef and I figure maybe he's sick of it. I'm not, but he might be. So, um, yeah, that was like five years ago. And so I bought Total Health. I think it was Total Health after Wheat Belly, also by Dr. Davis. And I was reading that in September and then, you know, the sugar came along with it. And then over the years, you know, I was doing the low carb, high fat, and then the, um, always having the veggies. Um, I was having berries. Um, I don't know if it was year round, but it definitely came down to in season because I was taking from my berry bush, my raspberry bush. There were no raspberries last year. I think the birds and the animals got to them before I could. And so it just kind of closed out the berries. So now I'm fruit free. I'm a fruit, if you know what I mean, but I'm fruit free. And then um, the veggies began to present a problem. I can't believe I was having those big A salads for all that time and touting it. And, you know, my clients were doing the same and, and I wasn't having any of the symptoms. And then suddenly one day veggies turned on me and it really does feel like it was like a one day thing. And so I was like, hmm, oh gosh. And then I began to watch things. It was always because Carno Mad was always, he's always light years ahead of me. And so he's like, give Sarah, give up the spinach because the oxalates, what are oxalates? Google it. Oh, okay. And then all the um, videos that we've had from people like Georgia Ede and um, Sally K. Norton about the oxalates in not just spinach, but especially spinach. So those things started to go by the wayside. And, um, you know, I'm still holding on to Sunday having four little asparagus spears and about 40 grams of Brussels sprouts. And that's my um, end to the veggie career. Um, and, it, and it works, you know, I love, I love them. They're from the eggs, so they've got that smoky, um, cooked in the cast iron pot smell, taste. Mm. So I still have those with no, um, no, um, you know, effects that like were like how it was with the other things, but um, that's okay. Um, I'll have them until those turn on me, but I seem to have such a small amount that I can still have it and enjoy it. So now I'm basically eggs and meat, mostly beef, and um, every now and then, um, well, about three times a week, I have the chopped uh, green onions on top, the top part of the nightshade. And then Greg has the bottoms. He likes the little bulbs of onion. And um, and then a couple of times a week, I'll have a, a, a slice of Havarti or smoked Gouda or smoked cheddar from all from Whole Foods in the sliced department um, of their cheeses. They're delicious and they're so worth it. Um, and I'll put that on the scrambled eggs. And that's what I'm down to. I have the um, fathead pizza on Saturday. And then on Sunday, that little bit of veg with usually a ribeye. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm down to. Am I bored? No. Do I miss other things? I, I, I just don't think about it. I get excited about what I can have and appreciate what I am having rather than getting cranky, pouty, bratty, about what I've given up along the way. I don't think it, it's worth it to go back there and think about that. I think moving on is really healthier for me, you know, and just getting the best that I can of the of the meats that I have and the eggs, usually Pete and Jerry. In fact, they're really never anything else. But so I have those things. It's just the size that differs, the medium, the large, the extra large, and the jumbo, depending on what's on sale and things like that. And I use Kerrygold butter. I also use Finlandia. I also use um, Vermont's Best has a new pasture-raised butter. Um, I use coconut oil. I use a blend of um, olive oil and avocado oil sometimes to cook things in, mostly avocado oil. Um, I cut it with that. So, you know, that's that's my wee world. and. Um, it works for me. You know, I love my great big messy burger. 
with the eggs surrounding it and the strips of bacon and the drippings from the pan poured over it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes a hunk of cheese on top, a slice of that cheese that I just mentioned. It's very, very simple. It's very, very, very doable for me, and it works. So, as an example, what am I having today? This is what I'm having today. I use the chronometer. I have the $35 version. I don't know what the difference is. I think you can get all the same things for free. So do that. Um, yeah, so these are my macros. And um, my calories for today are 1,266. My protein for the day is 120 grams, which is usually where I land, 120 to 125. My total carbs, never net, is 1.8, which is pretty much the green onion tops. And my fats today are 89 grams. So that's how that all works. And that works for me. And I don't have to like work towards getting the macros right or any of that kind of stuff. It's just I've been doing it for a while now and that's just how it works. I know it's satiating because it's the same sort of thing that I have every day. What am I having? I'm having 10 ounces of beef tenderloin. It was already smoked on the grill and I'll fin finish it off in a pan on top of the stove, the new stove, in my copper pan. I'm having three medium Pete and Jerry eggs scrambled with two tablespoons of green onions mixed in just for that little bit of flavor. And I'm having one slice of Havarti cheese on top of that. I'm having about six ounces worth of Keto non-dairy creamer throughout the day. I have three cups of coffee. I am now finishing off the first one and I will have that and enjoy that. And um, some mineral water, some salted lemon water, some Celtic salt crystals, a few supplements, no big deal. My thyroid used to be 75, now it's down to 50. I think it's micrograms. Um, and that's what I have every day. And it all just works for me. Um, I love eating one meal a day. Now doing Uber and Lyft, it certainly comes in handy because I'm not sitting there thinking at 1130, I've got to get home for my first meal. I have to, I'm starving. I'm not. <laughs> And then I just wait and have my OMAD a couple hours later. So usually I start early in the day. It's 4.30 right now. I'm going to change up and put the, put the apps on and away I go. And I'll swing by and pick up my elderly lady for AA at 7 and we'll do the meeting. And then I'll just go back to Uber and Lyft. And it's a wonderful summer day kind of activity. Gets me out of the house stops me from thinking about F-O-O-D. So what I'm curious about is when's a good time to overhaul your food program? What were you doing when you made decisions that ch absolutely changed your life around? Where were you? What were you doing? And what did you go from and to? Always interested in hearing about that. Thanks so much for watching. Is your cuppa gone yet? Did you have your full cuppa? I hope so. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.